we're here at NECA, the home base of uh, National Entertainment Collectibles Association. Right. Okay, and we're here with uh, Randy Falk. How do you guys come about getting the licenses for what you do? You know, it's a combination. Um, there's certain things that we're fans of um, that we proactively um, seek out. We're not going to do something that's uh, um, too young, too kid-like. Uh, we kind of have a little edge to everything we do. While it used to only be mature rated games or R-rated movies, you know, we've gone a little younger with some things like Pirates of the Caribbean and Harry Potter, but we still maintain that edge, uh, you know, with like 300, Gears of War, um, Resident Evil. Um, it's basically got to be something that's cool and we think there's a market for. There's a lot of people who work here who are also fans and spend a lot of their money on this type of stuff. So it's like if we know we'd go out and buy it, there's a lot of other people out there, you know, like us who would buy it too. This one I like a lot is we were able to do some stuff like in the game this doesn't happen but we asked Epic if we could joint this like a visor so you can flip it up and see his face underneath which is kind of a cool thing. Here's the uh, boom shot weapon, it's already done. And we updated it to have the lights in the front which is in the new game because in the first game they didn't have it. Yeah, yeah. so you see when like the lambent ones are all like poisoned or covered with the emulsion and yeah, stuff? Yeah, covered with yeah, the emulsion poison. Yeah. yeah. We're doing like a, a spring thing, then you press the locust symbol, and they, they all pop, pop out, out, and then you can... That's pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. So this is my favorite locust we've done so far. I mean, the drones and everything were cool, but I just think this guy turned out so awesome. We're slowly getting more and more in there, which is cool, because I like it, and it's pretty sick. You guys have a lot of different looks for a lot of different mm -hmm. figures, and a, a nice small group of guys that do it. I mean, how advantageous is it to have a group of guys that can handle every different kind of aspect of figure making. Um, for us it's pretty much essential because like you said we do so many different styles of projects whether it's like photorealistic um, you know human likenesses like you know an actor from Harry Potter or Pirates of the Caribbean or something like that um, or being able to uh, you know replicate animation like uh, the Ninja Turtles or Street Fighter um, so we definitely need a talent pool that's versatile and able to adapt and do different things. We couldn't get the regular Lancers, like the one you bought, we couldn't get it into Europe because they thought it looked custom, so it looked too much like a real gun. Oh, Even really? though it has like a chainsaw on it and it's covered in red, fake so blood. To sell it over there, so to even sell it over there, we kept having to add more and more blood. Eventually the whole front, including the barrel, was totally red and they yeah. still wouldn't approve it to get it into the country. So we had to uh, do something extreme and I at that point did not even know that they were doing um, a gold one in the game one of our uh, UK customers who like owns game he's like game station it's okay. sort of like they put one of a game stop or yeah. something in, in Europe he told me there's a gold Lancer in the new game so then I asked epic and they're like yeah but it's like an unlockable thing you know for the collector's editions right. it's not anything that's like important blah 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 but it ended up being the only way we could get the Lancers into the UK was by doing them gold. Are there any other um, products like the like the Lancer that you guys are are, are planning? Yeah um, you know even before the Lancer we had done a big Blade of Athena from God of War um, and we actually have it's turned into two different projects now because we have like a big resin one which weighs about 15 or 16 pounds and it has like a separate chain and it's it's really like a, a higher end kind of collector's piece that'll be limited in addition. Um, but then we're gonna do one that's more of like a foam uh, polyurethane, uh, lightweight thing that uh, could be used more for like costume or role play use and a lot more affordable. So it looks cool, but it's uh, you know something that's 25 or $30 versus you know, $130. So when we sent it over there, you know, we added in this this great new hip joint, which I was showing you on some of those other figures, so you can get all this leg movement, get a bend and crouch. And we added a knee joint hidden underneath the knee ca the knee pad, so you don't see it. Um, but then we found when we added the hip joints in that there wasn't enough room in the waist for the uh, ball joint anymore, because it goes down too far. So it had to get changed to a swivel. But then we added in an ab crunch, which wasn't on our original. So. You always gotta like be uh, able to adapt. There's all this stuff where like they're leaping and yeah, she's flipping, flipping each yeah. other around and stuff. So we want to be able to get as much of that into the toys as possible while still making it look like a great sculpture and not like you know some packed apart toy with too many joints in it. All right. Well, thanks for your time today, cool. and uh, we really appreciate it. Let us come out here. And do no, this. no problem. So, all right, there you guys have it.